Hello, friend. He's just kind of spinning around. You okay? Okay, there is like a breach here, so maybe we can... Whoa! <laughs> See ya. Yeah, they're kind of... Ah! Hello, everyone. It's your boy, Lucael, and welcome back to Subnautica. Hope you guys are doing well. This is episode three. So last week, uh, I felt a little bit bad. I feel like we didn't make like that much progress in the second episode. I kind of wish we were able to do some more, but I'm pretty confident that today we're going to do some pretty good progress. So as of recording this, I have now posted the first video on the channel a few days ago and uh, I've been kind of blown away by how many people have watched the first episode. Like, I was really happily surprised. Uh, right now it's sitting at around like 2,000 views, which is like way more than I usually get on my channel. So uh, thank you so much to everyone who watched the first episode. Uh, it really motivates me for the rest of the playthrough. It's nice knowing that so many people are going to be watching it and following along with me. So before we jump into things today, I want to address some of the comments that I've been getting on the first video. So first of all, a lot of people have been saying that they enjoy me kind of reading all the scanning entries and the dialogue and I was kind of surprised by that because I saw some people saying that like not a lot of Let's Players actually take time to read the entries which really surprised me because I feel like that's kind of like one of the main aspects of this game. But either way, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it because I'm certainly going to keep doing it because that's really interesting to me. I uh, got some comments saying that my camera was in the wrong place, which again, I've moved it to the uh, upper left, so hopefully that fixes it. I think I'm pretty happy with the placement right now. Got quite a lot of comments saying that uh, it's a bit of a shame that I was playing on controller, and I've been thinking about it. I do want to maybe switch to the keyboard. It's just that with my current setup, I don't really have like space to have my keyboard and my microphone at the same time. But I am looking into maybe like getting a mic arm so I can like get a better setup and play on keyboard. So maybe in the next episode, I might switch to the keyboard. For today, we're still going to be on controller, but maybe in the next one, uh, I'll make the switch to keyboard because it does sound much easier, at least for the... the... Uh, I also got quite a few comments of people who were disappointed that I went underwater when the explosion occurs on the Aurora. And I did feel kind of bad <laughs> when it happened. Like, it was just kind of like my survival instinct kicking in. You know, you see an explosion, I felt like, oh, maybe I should like go in the water because like, what if there's like a blast or something? I don't know, it's... It was just like this weird reflex I got, but then I felt kind of bad for missing the explosion. But uh, I asked my friend to send me a video of what it looks like, so I'm gonna do a reaction to it in this one, so hopefully that makes up for it. But uh, yeah, most of the comments have been very nice, so thank you guys so much for leaving them. I'm gonna keep reading them. Uh, I do want to really ask you guys to be careful about not leaving any spoilers in the comments, obviously. This is a blind playthrough, this is my first time playing the game, so I really don't want to know anything that's going to happen. That goes for major like story events or lore about the world, but uh, even some smaller stuff that sometimes people don't really think about. For example, one of the things I said in the first episode was like, oh, I wonder if you ever find out like a different name for the planet, you know, instead of like, uh, like 45, 46B or whatever. I was like, maybe eventually like you meet people native to the planet, maybe they tell you the name of the planet. I was just kind of wondering about the lore, you know, that was a rhetorical question, but then I got a bunch of people in the comments saying like, oh, fans call the planet by its name, and so, like, you wouldn't think that's a spoiler, but then you confirming this tells me I'm not gonna find out anything else later in the game, so like, so even when you think maybe it's not a big spoiler, it might confirm or deny, like, something I was already thinking about, and, uh, it's only a minor thing, but I do want to ask you guys to be uh, careful in the comments. I did ask a friend of mine to kind of screen the comments for major spoilers, so should be able to catch most of them. But still, please be careful. And also, please just try not to do too much like backseating in the comments. Um, it's this funny thing where like people always look for blind playthroughs of games they like, but they get really frustrated when the person playing doesn't like understand a mechanic right away, which I think we've all been there, you know, it's kind of part of discovering the game and the world. So unless I very explicitly ask for tips about some mechanics, please don't give me any tips in the comments, like I will figure stuff out on my own later. Like, you know, knowing that you can cut the creep vines with the knife, like it's something very simple and obvious that some people wanted to tell me in the comments, but it did make for a funny realization in the second episode, so uh, I do want to keep these moments in, these like small moments of realization, because I think they're fun to watch for you guys, so. So yeah, sorry for the long intro again, I just wanted to address some of the comments I've been getting. So before we jump in, let me watch that explosion of the aura and uh, react to it. The central dark matter reactor will reach a super critical state in T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Yeah, I just panicked. Five, I was like, oh shit, I gotta get out. I gotta go underwater. Three, two.
Okay. Not too bad. I was expecting kind of like even bigger, to be honest. I thought there was going to be like a huge blast, you know? You can even hear like the radiation ticking. And I thought it was going to be like even bigger. But I guess because there has to be still a ship for you to explore maybe later, it, it, it can't explode like that much. Um, all right, well, there you go. I've seen it now. <laughs> all right, so with that being said, thank you guys so much for being here today. Without any further ado, let's dive right in. I can't remember if we've like gotten confirmation of the reason why the Aurora crashed. Was it written in some of the data logs? I've kind of forgotten. Uh, let me just check. Wait, you can jump? I didn't even remember you could jump. <laughs> um, sorry, it's been like over a week since the last time I played. And uh, right, let me just move my camera a little bit. Um, yeah, it's been over a week since the last time I played because I've been a little busy, but uh, I'm trying to remember if they mentioned what happened to the Aurora for it to crash. I don't know what the heck is happening. Uh, the Aurora was carrying everything we needed. Yeah, they were building a phase gate, which I assume was like a mass relay kind of. Okay, the Degassi. Wait, so Aurora survivors and the Degassi. What's the, what's the Degassi? Um... I really have to apologize in advance because, as you'll quickly find out, I have really terrible memory. Uh, obviously, I remember finding this log in a previous episode, but like, did I find out what the Degassi was? Because it says Aurora Survivor and then Degassi Survivor. So like, maybe the ruins we found were of like another ship. I'll have to uh, look back in my previous episode. Environment scan, scattered wreckage. The wreckage from the Aurora. Uh, consistent with hull disintegration. Yeah, I don't think we ever found out what happened to the uh, to the uh, Aurora, but uh, I'm sure we're gonna find that out later in the game. So for now, I think I'm just gonna go grab some food, uh, get some water, and then I do want to kind of like run around and see if I can find more of that silver. Now that I know that the silver is not like this really special thing that you can only find in like a specific place, you can kind of find it anywhere. So I want to see if I can find any more. Okay, I see my little friend there has respawned. I'm not gonna go bother him. Give me your little bladder. So many sounds all around us. I think... I don't think the stuff in here has had time to respawn since the last time though. I really love like this massive moon because it's so close to the planet like it looks really awesome you can really see the all the texture on it like the craters and I don't know if it's like really massive or if it's just really close to the planet uh, I mean I'm guessing we're never gonna actually make it on there but I guess you never know like I'd never thought we'd see some dryland in this game and according to the logs we found apparently there is some dryland on the planet so Although I haven't seen it yet, so maybe it was all a mirage. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, it hasn't happened yet where one of my tools has run out of power, so I still don't know if like you can actually recharge them or if you need to build them all over again. That would kind of suck. I would really like finding more silver, more um, uh, lead is the other thing I needed. I would love like some kind of scanner that sends like a shockwave around you and kind of like highlights uh, items you can interact with like some games have. Because when you're just like looking around like this, you know, these uh, collectibles, they kind of blend into the, the environment. Hello friend, he's just kind of spinning around. You okay? You just surveying like for... Are you okay? Oh. I'm not gonna bother you. I was. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. You looked a little drunk there. The log said that you can like pick up these things and like use them. I wonder if that's. But they like, kind of blow up as soon as you get close. So I don't know about that. Get some oxygen back. <gasps> 
I also don't have like the greatest um I don't know how you say that in English, like uh, a, a feel for your surroundings. Sens de l'orientation, we say in French. Like just knowing where you've already been, where you're going, like because everything sort of looks the same down here, so it's a bit hard to uh Oh, propose the gassy habitat. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, because we got these coordinates about like uh potential habitat for the gassy. So a search and rescue mission for Margaret Maida, and it says lost in space near planet 4546. So I guess this is someone like that got lost here and then like Altera sent a search and rescue mission to find them. I guess they were on the Degassi. Maida was hired to accompany Paul Torgal on board the Degassi into uncharted space, defend the ship in case of assault by pirates or rival corporations. Okay, so I guess the Degassi is like this completely other ship different from the Aurora. And this person, Margaret Maida, was in there. Proposed the Degassi habitat. We're like, can I hear this message again? Uh, Aurora, I'm on the far side of the system. So yeah, there is Sunbeam is another ship that's currently in the same system, but they're like on the other side, so it's going to take them a week to get to the planet. Uh, and they're kind of like looking for survivors. Where is this audio message for the Degassi habitat? Wasn't that like one of these voice recordings? I can't find it. I don't know. Oh shit, we're getting close to the radiation. Need to get away from the ship. Some copper. I do want that. Yeah, these really blend into the background. They're kind of hard to see. 30 seconds. Titanium. Oh, nice, some lead. Some gold. Okay, I need to get out of here, though. Really need to get out of here. Whee! I love this thing. Wait, what did it say? It said something about oxygen. Oh, replenish oxygen. Oh, you can use it to replenish your oxygen. Oh, so it's like a second... Oh, like an emergency oxygen replenish. That's so useful. Okay, well, see? That's very good to know. Uh, that could stop me from dying in an emergency. Uh, I'm kind of just looking for like a bit more silver, because I only had the one. So let's keep looking. Some copper. I'll grab all the copper I can see because like it is a little bit rare compared to the titanium. I think that gold I found was the first gold that I ever found. I don't think I ever found any in the other episodes. I could be wrong again. I have terrible memory so I'm sorry if like you're watching this whole playthrough in a playlist you're gonna be like don't you remember in the last episode you did this? It's like no sorry. <laughs> For me there's like a week between each recording so titanium it's a little bit hard to remember where I was sometimes and we're back in the big tube ah shit there's one some of these explodey fish here but like there's also a lot of lead so we're gonna need to risk it Maybe if they don't see me, they are not going to attack me. There you go. Got some lead there. Ooh, some silver. Very nice. Ooh, and gold. Okay, I think they have like all these more precious items close to these, uh, these damn exploding fish. Ah, okay, so... <laughs> First one that I think I was able to escape without getting hit. So if I just replenish... Okay, so it's a very small... It's kind of a very small amount it gives you back. I thought maybe it gave you like a full thing, but... 
I guess that's fair. It's more like a, for emergencies, you know. Uh, this little tunnel here has a lot of... Uh, This place has a lot of minerals here. I love the sound these guys make. Oh, I haven't scanned those. Limestone chunk. Limestone outcrops. These unusual geological structures often form around titanium and copper deposits and are distinct to this planet. Closer analysis reveals the stone around the metal has been hardened against erosion, but the mechanism remains unknown. So they're always titanium or copper. Okay. So they're never silver. I guess the silver is always in like these smaller, these these other ones, like um, well, I don't have any right now, but full of sulfur. I need to grab that sulfur because like it's a little bit hard to find usually. Uh, let's get rid of this titanium. I'm gonna grab this. I'm also gonna need to build some containers pretty soon because like my storage on the ship was already kind of full just limestone again I love the sound these guys make they go burp, 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 burp. Burp, 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 burp. I want to grab his little things he drops all right um let's just go back I think we can build a few things now Wait, is this guy like carrying... Are you carrying something? I think he's carrying some metal salvage. Huh. What do you even want that for, buddy? You can't eat that. Yeah, you really need more uh, quick slots in this game. Five is very few, I think. Someone mentioned there is a mod to get more quick slot and I might get that. Would you guys consider that cheating? Because like five quick slots, considering the amount of tools that you have, uh, it seems like very little, you know? Okay, I think with the lead we found, I might be able to make the suit. I'm not sure. Uh, if we get the radiation suit, I might just go straight for the Aurora. Although there might be like other dangers there. For the radiation suit, we just need another fiber mesh. That's it and some lead, which we already have, so let's definitely do that. Okay, but I need more creep vine samples first. Okay, let's make another copper wire. Uh, okay, I'm gonna make some water and some food, because I'm a little low on those. So let's eat, bottoms up. Gulp, gulp. And yum. Yummers. Okay. Um, with another silver ore, I could make a wiring kit. Okay, so we almost got the fabricator. We just need like a few more things and a compass as well. Just need some more silver. And then the radiation suit I also almost have. I'm going to store some of this sulfur. I'm not really sure what the sulfur is for, but it seems kind of important because it's hard to get oh also i love how when you put an item in storage it kind of gets auto sorted like the quartz goes with the quartz and like it like arranges itself automatically i do appreciate that i'm just gonna go quickly for some creep vines That's all we needed. Although if I could find some silver. Okay, so what I've learned is like, there's never any silver in the limestone deposits. They're always like in this other type of rocks. So that's good to know. Also, I love this clever piece of game design here where like when you go up the ladder or even down the ladder, the first thing you see is the radio in front of you because getting a new message is very important. So they make sure that it's like right in front of you so that you don't miss it. That's clever. All right, 
another fiber mesh. And with this, we get to make the radiation suit. Nice. All right. Uh, and it gets auto equipped and it comes with gloves too. Lead based radiation protection. Okay, so with this, that means we can get to. Oh, okay, so the helmet is different from the rebreather. There are two different helmets. I guess that makes sense. I mean, I kind of wish you could put the rebreather on your radiation suit though. Hmm. Okay, well, so if we want to get close to the Aurora, we're going to need to put the full suit on, I guess. Uh, how do you build like a container again? A waterproof locker? You just need some titanium. Okay. Uh, let's do that because uh, I'm starting to have like a lot of stuff now. So I need another locker. Okay, nice. So... And again, it kind of sucks that you can't just drop the locker and it works. You first need to put it in your quick slot, then deploy it. Uh, it's just like an added step for no reason, you know? I Sorry if I seem like I'm complaining a lot. <laughs> it's not that I don't like the game, it's just like these tiny little nitpicks. There we go. There's a locker. So, not like a ton of space, but... It's something. We can put like a copper ore in there. I just want to clear some space in my inventory. And I'm even going to drop the creep vine. Okay, I'm going to eat and drink to refill my things. And then I think I kind of want to go towards the Aurora. I mean, is it too early to do that? Because the Aurora is it's like it's such a massive landmark, right? It's like the first thing you see in the game. So it feels like kind of a, like an end game objective almost, but it's very easy to access because it's right in front of you. And like you would assume that all you need to get to it is the radiation suit, but like it might be protected by like very large predators. Like I don't really know yet, you know, so I'm a little anxious, but I'm also really curious to like get close to it and see what we can find there. So I'm going to eat and drink and then I think I might try and like go check out the Aurora. Where's a bladder fish when you need one? There you go. Come over here, buddy. Uh, about the survival aspects, you know a lot of people have been telling me in the comments, it is a bit of a hassle at the beginning of the game, but it gets like less annoying later on, because I'm guessing we're gonna get like, you know, maybe some kind of fabricator that can just dispense you water at will or like Something like that, you know, stuff that you can build to make that stuff less of a hassle, so... Uh, it doesn't bother me too much. I still don't know why... Like, this thing was destroyed that one time. It was all, like, broken, there was smoke coming out of my pot, I don't understand why. Oh, let's also get that. Alright, so water, water, uh, food, food. Oh, you can also go over a hundred. Interesting. Alright, so now we're completely full. I would say it's kind of time to go check out the Aurora. I might be in for a bad surprise. I have like this feeling that it's going to be protected by like this massive monster or something. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> so. Let's assign the sea glide, although I will go in my sea moth. Uh, actually, okay, my scanner is still like halfway good. Uh, I'm gonna bring the repair tool. Yeah, I think I should be good with this. Uh, I'm gonna store the copper because like I don't need it where I'm going. Let's just keep like only, we're only gonna bring the, the bare minimum so that we have plenty of space to bring some stuff back. Uh, unfortunately, we're quite like ahead in the day, but that's fine. I'm gonna save. Like, just watch, it's actually gonna be, like, much further away than I think. And, like, I'm gonna keep trying to get close to it, but it's gonna be, like, so far that, like, you can't really get there. Oh, man, the sun's setting, but... 
That's fine. That's fine. At least there's a, a light on this thing. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Captain. Also, thank you for calling me Captain. <laughs> I don't think I deserve that, but... All right, let's see what we can find closer to the Aurora. It's a little scary, but... Okay, so the radiation shouldn't... Oh man, it's getting dark already. Let's stay close to the surface, shall we? Okay, so it's still quite shallow around here. So not too bad. Look at that. Okay, we're getting close to it. There's a bunch more debris here. Uh, let's go see what we can find. Because this is new debris. So let's get our scanner out. What can we find around here? I'm not seeing like any predators around. At first, at first. Ah, oh, I still don't have the cutter though. Ah, oh, you're probably gonna need the cutter to get inside the ship proper, if I have to guess. And I don't have the cutter yet, but maybe we can find some uh, parts of it here. Nope, nothing. In fact, there ain't nothing here. Metal salvage. Is there nothing here? Seems like a real waste. Okay, there's a door. But I, th I think I need the cutter. Okay, I just can't get inside this thing. Oh. Wait. Damage wiring. Oh! Uh, sure. Look at that, just like magic. Ooh. Hello? Wait, hang on. Let me go back to the surface. Look at this light there. I feel like that's kind of meant to uh, attract your attention. Who knows? All right, there's got to be something good in here, right? Like a message or something? Um... Another photo? Why is there always this one photo? Like, does everyone have the same, like, sister? Uh, is there nothing here? Or am I blind? Okay, there's just nothing in here, apparently. That's really disappointing. Oh. Oh. Hang on. Might have spoken too soon. Uh... Wait, what? Oh. Wait, what? What am I scanning here? Sea glide? I don't care about that. There was just nothing in here. Ah, oh, that's really disappointing. I thought I was gonna find something, like, really cool. But it's just a dead end with nothing. Okay, well, that's too bad. That's too bad. Because, like, this is the first thing you would find after getting the... the radiation suit, so you would think there would be something nice in here, but... Oh well. Alright, let's keep getting closer to the ship. Is that anything? Just metal salvage. What am I hearing? It's just very noisy around here. Okay, we can actually reach the bottom. For some reason, I thought the ship would be somewhere like where the water is very deep, but I guess it makes sense that it's in shallow waters. That's why it's poking out of the water so much, because it actually touched the bottom. 
Well, this is it. This is the Aurora and it's very low textures. Um, yeah, the textures are very low resolution because I'm, I'm playing this on medium. <laughs> I don't have the best computer, I'm sorry. Um, oops. I'm really good at scaring myself by running into stuff. Uh, is this anything there? That looks kind of important. Oh, a supply crate. Some water. Okay. Uh, I really hope the sun will... Oh wow, you can actually... That's some actual dry land that we can stand on. Holy shit. What am I hearing? I guess we're just hearing like the fire inside the ship. You know, it's actually smaller than I thought. I thought it was very, very far away and so it was gonna be like huge. It's not actually that big. And the question is, can we actually go inside? It doesn't look like it. Like I don't see any obvious entrance. What's making all this sound? Is it me? Why does it sound like I'm walking in, in chain mail? Is it like my radiation suit? That's very noisy. I guess we'll just take a look around the whole ship. Metal salvage. Uh, thankfully we got some sunlight now. That'll make things a lot easier. Oh, I think that's a power cell. Nice. Very happy to find one of those. I've scanned you already. It would actually be kind of like a clever subversion if you go check the ship and there's like nothing. <laughs> like you can't actually find anything that useful. Metal salvage. This is just empty. Do I know you? Yes, I do. There's a lot of these boxes, but they don't... Oh, propulsion cannon. Nice. Yes. Okay, we're gonna get to make that later. Uh, here's another one. Uh, oh, got a stalker over there. You just uh, eating some fish? Don't worry about me. Oh, it almost looks like you can go down there, but no, I don't think so. Don't worry about me, I'm not gonna bother you. Just go on with your business, you too, Mr. Shark. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of sounds. A lot of sounds. There's something poking out of the water there. Not sure what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sound. Oh! Okay, that sounded right in my ear. Life form readings in this region are. Excuse spots. me? The Aurora's radioactive fallout will have devastating effects on the alien ecosystem if oh. not contained within the next 24 hours. Uh, well, I can't do anything about that. How do you expect me to contain... You know? What is shaking? What is happening? What is happening? I hear like roaring and stuff. Why is everything shaking? Okay, there is like a breach here, so maybe we can... Whoa! Hi. Oh, that's a big boy. That's a 
big boy. Can I actually go inside? I just want to get inside real quick. Thank you. Okay, so I was right. There are like some big predators around here. Okay, I think we're inside now. Uh, sort of, not really. Ah. Okay, so they said something about like in the next 24 hours, I need to contain the radiation, but like, I can't do that. I'm just one guy. Like, what do you expect me to do? Oh, look at that. Little crabs. Hey, crab, a cave crawler. Hello. Ah. Oh, they attacked me. Okay, I did not expect you guys to attack me. You looked so... You looked so nice. Agile, territorial, carrion feeder. Uh, well adapted to both land and sea. Gas exchange membrane. Absorbs essential gases from the air or water for basic bodily regulation. Mandibles, the species seeks out corpses and packs before defending its claim while the corpse is devoured. Ooh, listen to this music. Uh, necessary waste recycler, avoid or incapacitate. Ow! Stab it! Can I not attack them? Okay, apparently I can't attack them. Uh, that's a problem because they're kind of like in my way. I guess maybe if I had a cannon, but I don't have a cannon right now. Another power cell. Okay, I think this is kind of probably the main entrance you're supposed to go through. That's the feeling I'm getting. Ow! You guys are not very nice. You're supposed to be carrion feeder. You're not supposed to attack like someone. Uh, how do you get inside here? How can I get inside? Okay, uh, it's only a guess, but ow! God damn it! You little bastards! I think, uh, oh, maybe with the propulsion cannon, I could move these things, right? Or with the habitat builder, maybe you can like these. Okay, you guys are really annoying. I'm gonna get out of here. These little shits. I think you need the propulsion cannon here. That's why they gave you like some scans of it. Uh, not too far. Is there like anything else I can explore? Oh, maybe I can come through here. No, I'm kind of stuck in the environment here. Okay, yeah, I think this was this is like the main entrance you're supposed to come through to explore the ship. Um, what is shaking so much? I guess it's just the ship. Uh, I'm gonna use health kit. I want to be at full health. So what do they mean by like devastating effect on the wildlife? Does that mean it's gonna kill every fish around? I sure hope not. Or like does it mean the radiation will make like all the fish bigger? Like transform them all into like huge monsters? That would be even worse. I need to get back to the sea mod somehow. I need to go and build that propulsion cannon, I think, if I want to, uh... Should I... Should I just reload and come back with it? No, because I need the scans. I just don't want to run into, like, that huge, like, snake monster we saw. That was really scary. I didn't, like, feel these tremors before. I guess that just like started. There's like a ton of stuff down there, but like kind of scared <laughs> to go down there. Especially after I've seen that that like big creature. But then what if I come back and like something bad has happened? 
Like, what is down there? You know what? I am curious. Let me just go take a quick look. Because there doesn't seem to actually be much. It seems to be mostly like wreckage. You know? Wreckage, sand. And then... Uh, Is everything still good with me? Self-scan complete. What? Foreign bacteria counters reached statistically significant levels. No adverse effects detected. What did it say? I was infected? Infected by what? Bacteria? Okay, that's bad. Is it because of these little, these little creatures that attack me? Little cave crawlers. Nope. Oh, it's just a stalker. All this rumbling. Very worrying. Just some wreckage, right? Yeah. Might as well pick it up, I guess. A power transmitter? That's new. Not sure what that does. Salvage, let's just salvage. These guys have a habit of getting stuck in the ground. There's a bunch of stuff down there, but I think it's all metal salvage, right? I hate how wide open this is, like I feel like something massive could just come out of there. There's like... Constantly so many sounds around you. It's very unnerving. <laughs> it's like you just don't know what could be out there. Oh, hello. What are you? A sky ray. Wait, I want to scan you. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Yay. A sky ray. Has a bird-like head. Does it? and feathered wings which enable it to fly. Sky rays are commonly found circling floating structures. Rarely venture far out to sea. They will perch on dry land but are prone to flee on approach. Although its wings give it some resemblance in silhouette to the waterborne rays on 4546, analysis shows no greater genetic overlap with those species than the planetary average. In fact, the sky rays appears to have split off the evolutionary tree much earlier than most. Its diet is largely seed-based, Sky rays have not been observed diving for food, which implies they rely on land-based plants. So there is land, and that kind of confirms it. Uh, assessment presents may indicate nearby dry land. Interesting. I really did not thought... Uh, look at that repeating texture there. I really did not expect any dry land in this game. Because it kind of goes against like the whole concept of the game. But uh, there's actually something very reassuring about knowing that there's going to be some dry land. I mean, I guess technically right now we are on dry land, but... Uh, are you okay, buddy? You kind of out the water now. Uh, I'm getting like further and further away from the sea mod. I thought I was getting closer, but it's very far away. That's what I get for saying the ship was not as big as I thought. What was that big thing I saw? Like that was my first time seeing something that big. What is this music? Why is the music so creepy here? Ugh, don't like that. I really don't like that. Uh, 
Whoa. Okay, no, it's just a stalker. Just a stalker. Don't worry. Uh, what the hell is this? Oh, it's just some lead. But I need... Oh, it's like a big, like, block of lead, but I can't collect it, because I guess I need, like, some kind of drill. Some kind of mining equipment. Why is the music so creepy here? Like, this is music that tells you you're in danger. What is that? What is that down there? Is that just a rock? Now I don't trust anything. Oh, I'm so far from the ship. I really don't like this. And it's getting dark again. I'm sticking to the surface. I gotta get to the surface. Because, like, the water is really deep here. I really don't like this. Okay, where's my damn... I need my uh, sea glide. Because uh, I gotta get back to my sea moth. But let's stick to the surface because... Uh, the music is telling me this place is very dangerous. Look at that, the massive like reactors. Oh! Oh, that's a big boy there. That's a big boy there. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, and I need to dive to get around this thing. Oh fuck. And it's nighttime. Oh, I'm in deep shit now. Oh, fuck, I'm kinda stuck here. Shit. Oh no. Oh no. This is a nightmare. This is like the worst case scenario. This is the worst shit ever. Seek fluid intake. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, I am not. I am not going into. Oh, there is something huge down there with me. Oh. Okay, you know what? I'm pussying out of this. <laughs> like, I'm not. I need. To just gonna reload my save I'm sorry I didn't really do anything this whole time I've just been going around the ship like I scanned a few things but I'm just I'm sorry there's no way I'm swimming into this dark water with this this big thing there I'm just gonna go back I'm sorry <laughs> I cannot do this it's way too scary I'm gonna go get the propulsion cannon and then I'll come back okay just give me a chance here. If you didn't know I'm a super scaredy cat, well now you know. Alright, let's go grab the propulsion cannon again, and then I will go back so we can actually get inside the ship. At least I assume that's how you get inside. Don't be too disappointed just because I didn't face my fears. Like, I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of other occasions where I have no choice but to do it. Just give me a chance, okay? I'm scared. Plus it was nighttime, like fuck that. Don't attack me. Medkit. Right now I just need to find the propulsion cannon again. That's a lot more of these boxes than I saw the first time. A lot of, uh... Oh, apparently I got a message. A lot of these first aid kits. Is 
Cyclops engine fragment? The Cyclops is the most popular and reliable deep sea submersible in the galaxy. Oh, that's like a bigger sea moth. By comparison to the competition, it can be crewed by just one pilot, hence the name. Uh, features three speed manual piloting controls and forward observation deck for precision maneuvering, dry dock for transportation, maintenance, and recharging of scouting vehicles. Very nice. Extensive storage solutions in the keel hold section, internal and external video feeds, onboard AI for threat detection, extensive customization options. Wow, that sounds really good, but that's going to be hard to build. Advice for captains, higher speeds generate additional noise, which may attract undesired attention. I really don't like you saying that. <laughs> power consumption, engine off 0%. Oh, okay, so you got to be wary of your power consumption. Silent running mode may be activated in conjunction with any speed setting to reduce noise close to zero at a substantial... Ah, oh. you're gonna have me do this, aren't you? You're gonna need to like pilot this thing in a place where there's like giant predators that like can hear you and you're gonna need to run in silent mode so that they don't attack you. I see you, I see what you're doing here. I can already... I can already imagine how fucking terrifying that's gonna be. Cyclops upgrades may be fabricated at the terminal in the engine room and installed at the neighboring panel. And the Cyclops does not feature habitation quarters. It is recommended the captain drop a rota to decide who gets to sleep in the corridor each night. Automatic fire suppression, so hull damage and high speeds increase fire risk. And an emergency ballast in the event of full system failure, this vehicle will sink. Okay. Are we actually gonna get to build that? Okay, we got the blueprint for the engine. Only the engine, not the vehicle itself. Okay. Interesting. So there's like another even bigger vehicle that you can build called a Cyclops. Interesting. Uh, where was that repulsion cannon? I wish the nights weren't so long on this planet. <laughs> there's a really long period of the day where it's just completely dark and I hate that. I don't think the sand sharks attack the sea moth because like it's a little too big for them, I would assume. Right? Like they just sound right here in your ear, but I don't think they actually attack you. And uh, hopefully I'm right about that. Oops, sorry. This game is only going to get scarier, isn't it? I have a feeling. I have a feeling. At some point we're going to have to dive deep, deep below. Oh boy, I am not ready for that. I don't know how I'm going to do it, guys, because like... The deep ocean terrifies me. I don't know how I'm going to manage. Yeah, they do carry, like, metal salvage. I wonder why. Are they, like, trying to build, like, a little habitat for themselves or something? I'm just kind of waiting for some freaking daylight. This roar sounds like something way bigger than a stalker. Life form readings in this region are sparse. The Aurora's radioactive fallout will have devastating effects on the alien ecosystem if not contained within the next 24 hours. What do you mean by devastating? What does that mean? Like devastating how? I don't like these roars. Can I get some daylight please? I want to go down there but I don't want to do it while it's dark. This is reminding me of like the first time I dove underwater in Giant's Deep in Outer Wilds, except like 10 times worse. Ten times worse. 
Okay, this big thing is somewhere around here. Right? The collision here is a little, it's a little weird. Like, it feels like I should be able to go through there, but I can't. Okay, there's that big thing there. I can see it from here. Oh, oh, oh. No, don't see me, please. Oh, 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 it's coming this way. Mm. Okay, yeah, this is a huge predator. I think it's like this... I've seen this creature in like the promotional material for the game. It's got like the big kind of like appendages or like horns on its face. I think I've seen it before. Uh, it looks very scary. I don't want to tango with it, that's for sure. I don't... Can I not come through there? Oh god, you're gonna have me... I feel like it's protecting this this thing because they don't want you to get to it yet. I wish I could scan it, but there ain't no way I'm getting close to it. <laughs> there ain't no way. I just need to scan a couple like propulsion cannons, please. Please. Scan these little fuckers again. Cave crawler. These little bastards. Alright. Nah, where is the propulsion cannon? Need some propulsion cannons. Weren't they like around here? Where did I find those propulsion cannons? God, fuck this thing. Fuck this thing. I'm getting out of here. I'm bailing out of here. Where was that damn cannon? Like, I found a bunch of them. Weren't they like around here? It was in these boxes. Right? Propulsion cannon? Yes! Okay, nice. That's all I wanted. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Let's go back to the pod and uh, try and actually build that. Uh, what do you need for that? Propulsion cannon. A wiring kit, some titanium, and a battery. I just need to find some silver. There should be some close to the pod. Let's do that. Like, you can kind of get to the opening in the back of the ship, uh, protected by these kind of like crawlers, but there is like this large monster also in your way. But, like, they made it so you can kind of, you know, you can kind of avoid it. I don't even know if the propulsion cannon is what I'm gonna need to, uh... Also, this message about like 24 hour before devastating effects to the... I don't know what that meant. I hope it doesn't mean like they give you the cannon, right? They're like, here's this passage behind the ship. You need the cannon to get there. But then you need to go back to your pod to build a cannon. And by the time you come back to the ship, all these creatures will have like morphed into like some bigger, more dangerous version of themselves. That would suck. <laughs> that would suck big time. All right, let's go in that little that little tunnel there, because I think that's kind of like the main place where you're supposed to find some silver. Uh, at least it had a bunch last time I went there. But it might not have respawned yet. Can you sometimes find silver like here at the bottom of this uh, area? Another creature egg. This one looks a little different. Guess not. Who are you? I I. Oh, <laughs> I guess that's a very fitting name. I I. 
An extreme evolutionary adaption where 90% of the life form's body mass is dedicated to the ocular cavity that doesn't seem very efficient. Oversized eyeball, deep set rings in the lens suggest specialization for identifying its predators in low light environments long before they come into attack range. Underdeveloped fins, incapable of fast movement, this species is vulnerable to agile predators at close range. Shark species may have evolved hunting techniques to close on the eye eye, unseen from above, below, or behind. Uh, this organism and the common peeper share a common evolutionary ancestor. While the eye eye has sacrificed maneuverability, it shares and enhances its cousin's powerful eyesight. The ancestral's alpha peeper may have been one of the first life forms on 4546b to develop eyesight many millions of years ago. It is edible, but it's got a low calorie count. Let's try and uh, taste that. I just need like one silver. 30 seconds. Just give me like one silver. Just one silver. I would really appreciate that. Hey, old fella. I wish you guys weren't so scared of me. I'm not gonna attack you. Okay, I'm just going back where I was before. There's no more silver here. Ah, I didn't think you had respawned already. Gotta be some silver in these little tunnels there. Come on, give me some silver. Sandstone chunk? Uh, yes. Okay, so these always have either lead, silver, or gold. These common porous outcrops seem to form around small amounts of precious metals, or otherwise these metals are part of a sedimentary buildup over time. Okay, please give me some silver. Uh, I think that was silver? Eee. Some gold. Some lead. So you really want to be looking like in these little tunnels. That seems to be the only place where you can find these. And they do like look different. They have like a different color, so. I think we should have everything we need to build our propulsion cannon. Do we have these? Yes. I'm just gonna scan all these just so I can stop running into them. It just sucks because like it, you get filled with uh, all this titanium that you don't really need. My flashlight is almost out of energy so what happens when it's out? I guess we're gonna find that out pretty soon. Uh, where's my pod? Oh. I couldn't see it. It's kind of hard to see with the blue there. All right, nothing damaged in here. Wait, where's my silver? I think I put my silver in the container outside. Yeah, silver is very hard to find, so uh, it's going to be hard to make everything we want. But okay, firing kit, battery, titanium. Let's make it. Propulsion can it warps gravity to pull and push objects. I think with this we can get inside the ship by moving the stuff around. Oh, why is it so big? Whoa. Okay, don't know what that was. Load item from inventory? Oh, so you can kind of like shoot it? Okay. 
Okay, let's just make some water. And I will be listening to that message also, don't worry. Alright, so first things first, let's drink. Uh, man, I have a lot of these first aid kits now. Uh, let's eat. I'm gonna put some of these first aid kits in there. Uh, and let's listen to this message. This is Sunbeam. You know Aurora. We're from a little transgov on the far side of Andromeda. And we have a saying Andromeda? There, There's no bad without the good. No good without the bad. Sounds like you tasted a bunch of the former. But that only means you're overdue a whole lot of the latter. I guess so. Might just be, we're in. We're scanning for somewhere to park. We'll be in touch when we find it. Sunbeam out. Hey, all right. This is good news. So they are getting closer to the to the planet. They're looking for somewhere to park, uh, which means if there is dry land on the planet, then I guess that's where they're going to land. And then hopefully they're going to wait there for a while so that we can actually meet up with them, you know. But uh, I also think it's probably not going to be that simple. Like they're just not they're not just going to take us off planet like right away. This is Maybe like Endgame. This might be like the final destination is meeting up with the Sunbeam. Um, so you can grab an item. Let me see if it works with like some basic uh, like metal. Uh, like let's say with this. Whoa. Oh. Oh. So it just grabs it, and then you can shoot it. Damn. Or release. Okay, and then you can just grab it. Okay. Uh, oh, it seems to take a lot of power, though. I'm already at 90, just from using it, like, twice. Um... Okay. I'm gonna wait until it's daytime before going back to the ship. Got another med kit. Thankfully, thanks to this thing, there's no danger of running out of med kits. Like, you get plenty of them, so that's very nice. So, is there anything I could build? I would need another wiring kit for the compass, but for that, I need two silver. I'm gonna have to wait for the minerals to uh, respawn in the caves. When it comes to the habitat builder, again, we need another wiring kit, so that's two more silver, and then the computer chip. And the laser cutter, we don't have the full blueprint, so you, we can't get that. Uh, Pathfinder tool does sound like pretty interesting. It released these little discs that help you find your way through like tunnels. So there's probably some places where go we're gonna need to uh, use that. Uh, I'm not gonna make that yet, because I don't really need it right now, but it's something to keep in mind for later for sure. I hope the propulsion cannon works on these objects blocking my path in uh, the ship. If not, it's kind of a waste of time. And it's dark out. Alright, let's make our way to the ship. I'm not scared of the dark. <laughs> I'm not scared of the dark. Welcome aboard, Captain. I hope you get to expand your inventory at some point, but I really think that's not gonna happen just because like they already give you quite a lot. And maybe you can get like a backpack or something, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, I've also had a lot of people asking me in the comments if I was going to play Below Zero, which is like the expansion, I think, for this game. Uh, I don't really know yet, but if enough people ask for it, then sure, I'm willing to uh, give it a try. Because uh, I do enjoy the game so far, so... Uh, a friend of mine, though, did say that Below Zero was not very good, at least not as good as the main game, so... I mean, that's just one person's opinion, maybe some of you would disagree. Uh, I'm certainly willing to uh, play it for myself and make my own opinion, of course. That's just what he said. I really love the music in this game, and I kind of wish it was there more often. Because uh, whenever you're in your menu and stuff like that, the music just stops. Uh, you might have noticed that I've been adding some music in editing. I 
wish you guys were not so loud. Okay, so... Here come the tremors again. Uh, no sign of this... No sign of that big monster this time. So that's good for me. Alright, let's see if the propulsion cannon works here. I'm starting to get out of the way of these things. Uh, okay, it does. Ow. Does it? Uh, I mean, the physics are a little wonky, but it does work. Alright. Let's see if we can go in. Oh, there's fire in the way, though. Uh, oh. I should have brought the fire extinguisher. Do you think I can run through that? Oh. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. It just burned a little bit, but we're okay. Okay, so now we are in straight up the Aurora. Uh, that looks dangerous. Abandoned PDA. I think we're gonna find a bunch of like data. PDA data. Uh, lab access. If you need to tweak your equipment, please use the mod station in the forward section or retrieve pre-configured equipment from the lab next door to the data coil. The, the door code is 6483. I'm gonna write that down. Noted. Uh, what am I hearing? Obviously, it's dark in here, right? Ah, oh, I don't have the laser cutter! Of course. Uh, six... Three? Nice! Okay. Well, there's at least one door we can open here. A uh, large sample flask. What is that? Useless glass container. Okay, I don't think I really need that for now. Uh, pick up microscope, non-functional. I mean, can I scan it? No. Sample analyzer, non-functional. Got another PDA. Integrating new PDA data. What can we learn from the hive mind of Strater VI? How are the individuals which make up a hive mind to be categorized? Are they merely dumb components of the larger intelligent organism? Or is the larger mind merely a product of the independent organisms? Can it be both? I don't know, you tell me. We define organisms by their traits but find invariably that these traits depend on those of their environment. The concept of a tadpole is meaningless without the concept of the frog it will develop into. I mean, it's not meaningless you could still have a tadpole and analyze it and learn a lot of things about it even not knowing what it eventually turns into the idea of a predator is empty without an understanding of its prey this begs the question if we define everything by reference to everything else what have we actually explained that's pretty deep bro an illustrative experiment was recently performed on the hive mind colony discovered on straighter okay it's not vi it's six straighter six a device was placed outside the nest which would electrocute individuals approaching it. An ant colony would have lost many individuals before a basic danger signal was successfully communicated between them, resulting in learned avoidance of the device. Successful but costly. The Strider 6 colony quickly formed into two factions. One attempted to move... Wait, so a colony of what? People? Quickly formed into two factions, one attempted to move the device by brute force, sacrificing individuals as they did so. The second attempted to cover the device in sand. What were you guys analyzing? A hive mind. Okay, some kind of organism? It's not really specified. These two goals being mutually exclusive, a fight ensued. The first faction was beaten in virtue of their reduced numbers. The device was safely buried and the survivors called a truce. 
From the perspective of the individuals, this experiment must have been horrific. From the perspective of the hive mind, a nagging problem had been overcome with the most effective solution. Which perspective is the correct one? Okay, yeah, so like, if you treat each organism as its own individual, then of course, all the smaller ones getting beaten would lose. But if it's a hive mind, then it's just like solving a problem. We suggest that it is neither. By attempting to fit such entities into our rigid set of concepts, we are painting onto the world a false impression of concreteness and meaning, which is a reflection of our concepts of ourselves. Totally agree with that, and I think it's one of the more fascinating aspects of like sci-fi and fantasy, and uh, especially the concept of AI or aliens, because we tend to create aliens that, you know, they're kind of like anthropomorphic, they look a little human, uh, they speak a language, they communicate very similar to us. Uh, same with AI, you know, and it's because we're trying to create something that we can understand, you know, we are our own point of reference, but aliens in space on like another planet could be completely different, like in a way that we can't even think of right now. You know, they could be made of gas, they could be like, you know, just completely alien to anything we can imagine, so I always found that so fascinating. We describe straighter six individuals as attacking one another, just as we describe microbes in the human body, yet the straighter colony, like the body, cannot be healthy as a whole without the aggressions of its components. Yeah, like, uh, you know, white cells attacking microbes in your body. We describe neurons in the brain as being dumb, but brains as a whole as intelligent. But when an idea takes hold in the brain and forces out inferior ones, do we describe this as an act of aggression? Do we mourn dead neurons? I guess we don't. When a philosophy or a technology takes hold in human society, when wars are fought over them and people die, is that rightly seen as being good or evil? This is not to undermine the meaning of our existence. From where we stand, our existence is very serious indeed. But is our civilization and our universe really any different from the colony on Strider 6? This is very interesting stuff. Is intelligence something limited to things of flesh and blood? Or is the universe truly one giant intelligence system? and we but amoeba blowing self-important potholes in its surface? I don't know what this databank is, but it's very, very interesting. It's a very interesting... Uh, this is a very fascinating concept to be exploring, just from a philosophical standpoint. Like, if you compare humans and animals on Earth as, like, the microbes inside your own organism, you know, it's all a matter of perspective. From the point of view of, like, a microbe or a single cell, being attacked by another cell is like this act of aggression, but they're only part of us, you know? They're part of our own organism. And you could say the same about humans on like Earth, and like the way we've transformed Earth and stuff like that, but uh, of course the difference being that like Earth is not like a living organism, but you could, you know, you could argue that it kind of is in a way, because it's got like its own ecosystem and like... This is very interesting, I've never even really thought about this. Food for thought, as they say. We would do well as scientists to remember that our goal is not to paint the world as we see it, but to see it as it truly is. Indeed. Indeed, my friend. Very interesting. A data terminal. Wait, what? Data corruption detected on your PDA, your repulsion cannon blueprint. Oh, maybe that's why its energy goes down very quickly. Maybe like my blueprint was faulty. Is that what you're saying? Oh. Modification applies per percussive force to entities in range. Or do you just mean that the one I have is like the basic one and then I could upgrade it to this one with some magnetite, which I don't know how to get. See, some disinfected water, thanks. More water. You know what would be really great? Is if I could find some laser cutter blueprints in here. That would be great. Uh oh. Oh, thankfully I got like a tiny little pocket of air here. Ooh, that was close. Almost forgot we were underwater. 
Wait. Okay, I just went around. Okay. Um. Oh man, so there is more to see. Wait, can I open that? I can't get up there. Can I? Because I can't run. Can I? Can I like climb that? Oh, I can. But I can't open that door. Oh, God dang it. I think I can't explore anything else here because I don't have the cutters. That's really disappointing. Exchange power source. Oh, okay. So yeah, you can... A little battery. Wait, what? Okay, so this is an empty battery. What do I do with... Okay, so... I was right. You can reload like a tool with a full battery. Okay. So you don't need to build a tool again, which would have been really, really annoying to do. You just need like something else. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately, that's all we can do here because I can't cut this. Oh, man. I guess I'll have to come back here later. Okay, well, I guess that's it for the Aurora for now. We'll have to come back later when we have the laser cutter. Let's just get out of here. Well, we found... Ooh, Ooh that really hurt. Next time I should bring the fire extinguisher. Alright, well... We didn't find much, but... At least now we know that we can come back later. I guess I'll just go back to the ship then. To the pod. Where is this big monster? Oh, there it is. Hey, buddy, buddy, I'll see you later. I'm not ready to deal with you yet. Okay. Uh, I need to go make some batteries to recharge my weapons. Um... Do I have time to do a little bit more today? I have been recording for a while. Uh. Whoa. Hello. Life Pod 4? Uh, hi. Creature decoy attracts creatures to its location, can be deployed by hand or by submarine, cannot be reclaimed once. A creature decoy. Acquired. Okay. Wait, someone was in here. Where are they now? Did they just die? Lifepod 4. To any Altera crew. Landed in area of significant alien activity. Encountered predators in the Leviathan class. Highly aggressive. Must be that big snake. Spectroscope scanner assigned species designator Reaper. Oh, One how lovely. Attempted to swallow the life pod, doing extensive damage in the process. Only viable option is to make for the safety of the Aurora crash oh, site. they might be on the I've ship. I've retrieved a data box with the creature decoy and enough resources to fabricate a couple of them. The swim's longer than the decoy lifetime, but it should just be enough to keep them busy. If you don't find me on board the ship, presume I miscalculated. Oh, okay. So these big, like, snakes, they're reapers? Of course you would call them reapers. Like, how... How cliche, of course. Those goddamn Reapers. Ah yes, Reapers! Do we have any uh, fellow Mass Effect fans watching? Uh, big fan of Mass Effect here, as you can see. Uh, it's interesting that they don't show the LifePod logs in order of uh, LifePod numbers. That kind of bothers me. Okay, so now we know these are Reapers. Uh, we know they're extremely dangerous. We know they're big enough to try and swallow a full LifePod, which, uh, that's very bad. <laughs> 
And uh, I guess now we know we need to use these decoys to like, get rid of them. But uh, he says he was attacked here, but like I didn't see any of them in these waters. Like they seem to be mostly like further close to the ship. At least I haven't seen any. Maybe I just got lucky. Oh, hello. My friend uh, Reefbex. Uh, okay, Reapers, huh? Hmm. Huh. Well, I'm not in any hurry to be uh, tangoing with these guys. Uh, now, if only I could find some some laser cutters. All right. Uh, you really? I really wish we had more quick slots. I really might just use that mod for more quick slots. Uh, you know. Okay, so let's repair the Seamoth. Good. Now I need to make no new messages. I need to make some batteries. I'm gonna need more acid mushrooms and copper. I can get those. These are very easy to find. Love the music. So good. They were in the studio. Alright, let's get the copper. I'm gonna make some batteries. At least one. Okay, so how does that work? Exchange power source. Battery. Okay, now it's fully charged. Uh, so what do you do with the old batteries, though? Like, what's the point of these? Can you recharge them? Can I use, like... Can I, like, assign them? No, you can't assign them to your quick slot. Let's make another battery. Because my scan will run out pretty soon. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna go grab some food. Mm, come here, little peeper. Get in my belly! Alright, because I didn't do that much progress last week, and you guys have been nice enough to show up again this week, I will do like a little bit of extra today. Uh, we're gonna do a bit of a longer episode. And uh, I'm gonna try and go to that habitat thing again. Now that we have the rebreather, I wanna see if it's possible. Yum. Uh, I'll just eat it all, we can just get more later. Alright, so I'm gonna use the rebreather again. I think I'm gonna make another... Okay, so for a creature decoy, for three creature deco, you need a wiring kit and three titanium. Attracts creatures to its location, can be deployed by hand or by submarine. Cannot be reclaimed once deployed. So, I'm guessing this is like the main thing you can use against those reapers. Good to know. Alright, so... Let's get another uh, locker. I'm going to store this copper, this lead, titanium, gold, this empty battery, this stuff, sure. Let's go with this. And, uh, okay, where did I want to go? There was the second officer, last broadcast location. I've seen this one. Um, I think the thing I wanted to check was the cave system, yeah. Wait, which one was it that I went to last time? It was like this cave system, and then I found something like at the bottom. Because I think that now that I have the rebreather... It says conserves oxygen when diving deeper. So with this, I should be able to go below 200 meters, right? In theory? 
So. Welcome aboard, Captain. Um, should we go to this thing? Yeah, this is the one that was near a cave system. So let's go back in that cave system so I can explore it like a little better this time. Because it's only a hundred meters deep. And like the first time, I didn't even like make the connection that it was close to a cave system. Yeah, down there. Ooh. Okay. Let's go down there this time and uh, let's try and take a better look. Oops. But we need to stay above 200 meter with the Seamoth, otherwise it kind of gets destroyed. Warning. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. Okay, so I hear like some big roars, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's big predators here. Okay, are these dangerous? I mean, they don't look that dangerous. We could try and... Uh... Okay, see now I'm below 200 and I'm not getting a message, so I think I'm safe. Uh, would you... Would one of you lovely guys want to get scanned by any chance? Ah! Jesus fucking Christ. You bastard. You scared me. Came right in my face. God damn. What a rude little bitch. Uh, it seems like these snakes are kind of... Yeah, they're kind of... Ah! Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Okay, never mind. They are dangerous. They are dangerous for sure. Let me just scan you, you bastard. Ah, oh, it fucking killed me. God damn it. Ugh. Oh, you guys must have loved this, right? You guys must have loved me saying like, oh, it doesn't look that dangerous. Son of a all right, what did I lose? Ugh. I don't think I actually lost much. Because, like, all the stuff I have is, like, tools. I don't think you can lose your tools. Uh, where's... Ah, oh, but shit, that means I lost my Seamoth? Ah, oh, son of a... Wait, did I save before going there? I think I forgot to save. God damn it. And it's nighttime now, of course. You guys are gonna love this, I can just tell. I bet you thought that was so funny. What was I supposed to do against that thing? Like, could could I attack it with the propulsion cannon, maybe? I kind of panicked in the moment. I, I didn't notice how much damage it was actually doing to me. I should have. God damn it. I know, they just, they just look like kind of like little snakes, I was like, how dangerous can they really be, you know? Famous last words. How embarrassing. <laughs> how embarrassing for me. I guess I'm gonna use the sea glide to get there. Uh. Is there even like anything in these caves worth checking? This map is kind of interesting because, like, like I guess it's nice to have a map, but it's very hard to read. So. Like, I didn't even see it coming in, just like attached to my face right from behind. What a bastard. What an asshole creature. Unbelievable. Can you believe that, Mr. Reefback? I wonder if they have any silver on their back. I think they just have like... Little coral and stuff. Can you scan any of these? Ooh, Rouge Cradle. Hey! 
A complex cave dwelling flora specimen, the bright yellow core of its plant is protected by a rigid cage, presumably to ward off medium sized herbivore. Some red word? I never thought to scan all these things on its back. A common plant adaptable to many different environments, the red word is a staple part of the diet of many smaller herbivores. I just know these guys are dangerous. At least it said that in the in their description. This kind of looks like you can grab like something inside of them, but oh, oh, they give you some air back. As if I didn't like these guys enough already, they even give you some oxygen back. You guys are my favorite. I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad I got killed like that. Like an idiot. What is that? Excuse me? Oh, it's a scanner room fragment. Yeah, just flood my inventory, why don't you? Alright, where is the entrance to this damned cave system? I want to at least get my Seamoth back, you know? Hey! Hey, some silver. I scan these. Ah! What the? What's with everything attacking me down here? Why is everything so hostile suddenly? Alright, where is my Sima? Okay, well, now we know. Stay clear of these damn snakes. At least until we have some kind of weapon. I thought they were scared of me because like when I tried to get close to scan them, they just kind of ran away. Like I thought they were scared of me. Looks like I was the one who should have been scared of them. 30 seconds. All right, here we go. Let's save the game, I guess. Uh, I mean, can I get close to them with the... I mean, there's something down there. Is this the thing I scanned already? I think it is. Yeah, I think I already scanned that. Well, now I'm scared of going down there. Look at these bastards. Don't none of you jump me from behind, I swear. Is there anything else here? It sucks too because I wanted to scan one, but I didn't have time. I almost did. I need a scanner on the sea moth. Like, is there anything else down here? I could, I could, oh, mm. like I could go deeper, but. No, I'm not seeing much. Like, I want to explore in the sea moth to be safer, but... What is that? Hello? Oh! Sorry. Sand shark. Wait, I've already scanned you, didn't I? Oh, he's infected. Wait, wait, wait. Excuse me? Specimen with symptoms of infection? This organism is displaying signs of a bacterial infection. Bright green blisters are forming networks around the infection sites. Pathology suggests a waterborne bacterium capable of penetrating the body through the skin and respiratory system. I'm gonna hope that doesn't happen to us. Uh, underlying indications of genetic mutation and aggressive behavior, the bacterium itself is unlike any so far recorded in human exploration. May be contagious. Avoid. Do not under any circumstances consume the flesh. Gotcha. I shall not. I wasn't planning on eating anything that's bright green, to be honest. Okay, I think the thing we got down there was just the scan for the habitat. Right? So I'm not really sure there's actually anything uh, worth finding down here. I really wish I had a weapon to kill these guys. Get my revenge for what it did to me. Warning. Max 
Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. Yeah, I need to upgrade the C mod so I can actually... Excuse me. Rude. Uh... What is that? Oh, it's a creature egg. They come in all kinds of shapes. I guess they're like eggs of all kinds of different creatures. Um, and I really wish I could find these laser cutters. I'm kind of curious about this proposed habitat. It's really far down though, it's 250 meters. Maybe I'm better off keeping this for next time because uh, there might be a lot of stuff there. There's LifePod 17. May they rest in peace if they have died, but hopefully they haven't died and we get to uh, see them later. I really, really wonder if we're going to actually meet any other humans in this game. Because, um... I was going to say a spoiler for Auto Wilds. I'm not going to say it, but... How could I explain this? You know, sometimes you think you know how a game is because, like, it has some rules, you know? Like, from playing it for a while, you understand the rules. You, you kind of understand what it wouldn't do. And so, let's say you've never met a single NPC through, like, 30 hours of gameplay. Uh, if you eventually meet an NPC, it's kind of, like, jarring, you know? You're like, oh, that's new. Like, I did not expect that. So... It would feel weird to meet someone and talk to them in this game because like it's not one of the gameplay mechanics that you're introduced at least early on like a dialogue system stuff like that so i don't know if you're ever and again obviously don't tell me this is a rhetorical question but i wonder if you're gonna actually meet some people in this game it would be really interesting to meet the other survivors and like establish a camp of some kind but like i don't think so like, I feel like the whole game is going to be just about exploring and surviving on by yourself. But maybe the game will surprise me. Like, this is a lot of people's favorite games, so I'm sure it's full of surprises. Uh, okay, let's uh, repair this. You know, any good game needs its share of surprises. And twists and turns. This thing cannot modify, right? Yeah, it can build but not modify. Hmm. Well... No new messages. Alright, so I will save here. I don't have enough silver to build anything, unfortunately. Actually, what if the silver has respawned in the caves? Let me check just real quick. <laughs> I keep saying I'm gonna stop playing, but like, I always want to do just a little bit more. Where's that big tunnel? Oh, so could I like grab this guy? <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so now we get to get rid of these guys very easily. That's great. That's great. The cannon does consume a lot of power, though, which is a little bit unfortunate. But, uh, you know, batteries are easy to make, so I guess it's not that much of a problem. Alright, as the silver respawn by any chance? Boom! <laughs> Alright, that's very satisfying. Um... 30 seconds. Right, I'm not finding any silver. Uh, I think it takes a while for these minerals to kind of respawn. But that's fine. Uh, I was just wondering because like if I get some silver, I get to make the compass. And that would be kind of useful. Or, actually, I think 
We should probably give priority to the habitat builder, right? That would be even more useful than the compass. Uh, let's see. I'm sure I can find one piece of silver before the end of this recording. Come on, I just want one little piece of silver. Just one little piece of silver. Surely you can give me that, right? Come on, just one little silver. They're mostly in cave systems, so maybe it's like completely useless for me to be looking around like out here. Because I don't think you can find them just out in the open. I think they're only in caves. Also, I really love this. This thing doesn't seem to run out of power. Like its meter is for the oxygen, it's not actually for the power, so I don't think you ever need to recharge that, so that's great. That's very nice. So I'm noticing you can swim... Oh, hello. Have I scanned you before? A drooping stinger. Okay, well, I guess I shouldn't get too close. Zero photosynthetic cells detected. Okay. <laughs> Zero brain cells detected. Uh, implies carnivorous adaptation to low-light environments. Follicles along the tentacles are capable of detecting contact with foreign bodies, triggering an electromagnetic charge in the 600-watt range. Prey is likely paralyzed and consumed over many weeks. Assessment? Avoid. Oh, but there could be some good stuff in there. Should I try and, like... Whoa! See ya! Uh, why can I not grab this one? Okay, hello. Is anything in here? Um, I thought maybe you guys were protecting something, but it looks like there ain't jack shit in here. So, there ain't nothing in here. <laughs> that was kind of a waste of time and a waste of power. It would be so cool if you could get silver on the reef packs. I would love them even more. But I don't think you can. Hello. Oh, here we go. It's lead. Advised, a common complication for cave divers is loss of orientation, followed by eventual asphyxiation. Thanks for the warning, babe. I do get lost very easily. Some gold. Come on, give me some silver. There we go. All right. So let's not get lost, like she said. The deeper you get, the more likely you are to get lost. Thankfully, this cave system was not too complex. Okay, so we got the one silver that I wanted. Sadly, they couldn't give me any more than that, but... Oh, and I got a new radio message, so hey. We're gonna have done a lot of progress this episode, I'm very happy. It's uh, very nice that you get to swim faster with both arms. Alright, so... Here we got our two silvers. I think with this we'll get to build our habitat builder. But first, let's drink. Alright, yum. Alright, so wiring kit. And then the computer chip is in storage, I think. Yes. Now we get to make our fabricator. Uh, habitat builder. Fabricates habitat compartments and appliances from raw materials. The builder tool is designed to construct habitats capable of withstanding extreme environmental conditions. 
Okay. So here it is. Uh, oh, that's weird, like the light effect coming from the Seamoth. <laughs> I should probably Welcome close the light. Alright, so how does that work? I love the first time you grab like a tool. There's like a little animation where you're like, oh, or like the cannon where you activate it. That's kind of cool. Okay, so it opens like a straight up menu. Uh, a lot of this stuff is mostly titanium, which is great. A scanner room that's going to be very useful. Locates resources and wrecks within range. Okay. A solar panel. Bloodlight. A bioreactor. Battery charger. Battery charger. Oh, so that's why you get to keep your empty batteries. You can just put them in there and uh, recharge them. Super cool. Locker. Wall locker. Oh, man. Okay, I can't wait to get into all of that stuff. Um, so, like, my first reflex would be to build my base around the air pod because, like, that's kind of, you know, I'm very well acquainted with this area. I'm very familiar with it, so I feel kind of safe here. And uh, Also, I know there's no, like, major predator in the area. But um, I'm sure eventually we're going to go to places that are better for a habitat. But I guess we can always build just other bases in other places you might even eventually have like a teleporter that allows you to go between all your different habitats maybe i don't know i'm just guessing so this is very cool again because i don't usually play like survival games and like games where you build stuff i'm not very good at it <laughs> like i'm not very creative when it comes to building like a really cool house like in minecraft and stuff like that my house was always like kind of a cube with like the bare necessities in it but uh, because of the nature of this game where you're like stranded and you're kind of begging for like some comfort and some uh, appliances, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I do look forward to building a habitat. It's going to be pretty cool. I wonder if it just floats by default or like if you can build kind of like in, at the bottom of the water. Uh, we could build our base like in that big coral tube. That could be fun. I guess I'll try and think of like a few interesting locations where I could build a base. Uh, we're going to be doing this next time. And uh, let's end the episode by listening to that radio message we got. Aurora, we're approaching the planet now. We have a landing site for you that's... Well, it's better than the alternatives. We've sent you the coordinates. Uh-oh. It'll take us a couple of days to align our orbit. We should be able to establish direct contact with you during that time. Then we're coming in to get you. Cross your fingers, the weather holds. Don't leave us waiting. Sunbeam out. Oh no, I should not have done that. Now I'm on a timer. Okay, wait, where is it? Wait, where is it? They said they sent us the coordinates? Oh, there? That's, dude, that's so far away. Oh shit, and I'm on a timer. Okay, so what's gonna happen if I let the timer run out and I can't? reach them are they just gonna leave without me like they have to know there was a crash and like that the survivors are kind of like struggling to survive so they wouldn't just leave right away right they're probably gonna wait for a while sunbeam will arrive in 39 minutes dude that's really not that long shit i should have waited until the next episode before i did that okay well i guess we're not gonna waste any time building our habitat we're gonna try and get there thousand meter away that's really far like how large is the world like i've so far i haven't really gone that far in any direction you know because it's very scary and i need my my life pod to make like food and stuff like that but like how did they like how is the world contained because in something like minecraft you can go in any direction forever because it's procedurally uh, generated but like in most other games you eventually hit a wall like, the world is kind of, like, walled in. Uh, either an invisible wall or, like, the environment is kind of blocking you. But here, because we're, like, on an ocean planet, you would think it kind of goes forever in every direction. But this world is not 
generated like it's a set world so what's gonna happen if you go too far out like is it like in sea of thieves where like your ship just explodes and you, <laughs> you die um are they gonna have like a giant creature just like eat you because you ventured too far out maybe the weather gets really bad and then like you just kind of get lost and it respawns you at your last location like there has to be a system in place that prevents you from just going anywhere you want and i don't know yet what that's going to be but uh, we know there's at least a thousand meter of world in this direction so it's going to be a huge game um i don't know how long it's going to take but and now you're giving me this pressure i don't work well under pressure <laughs> All right, guys, well, uh, this has been a very long episode. I kind of wanted to make up for the lack of progress in the last one. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I really want those laser cutters because like we are finding all these doors that I can't get into and it's so uh, it's so frustrating, but I'm sure we're going to get it soon enough. Uh, I'm definitely going to focus on trying to meet the sunbeam next episode because uh, we're on a timer and it's a pretty short timer too, all things considered. And then I guess I'm going to try and spend some time building our base. Uh, I don't know how much of the base building you guys are interested in seeing or if I should like edit that stuff out. As usual, just let me know in the comments. I always love reading your thoughts and uh, getting some feedback. Again, please, no spoilers, no gameplay hints, uh, unless it's like very kind of surface level stuff. Like I know that it can be frustrating for people to watch someone like struggling with like basic gameplay stuff, but uh, just let me struggle and then it makes for a funny moment later when I finally realize it, so... As usual, if you want to catch next week's episode right now, you can do so on my Patreon in the description below. And until next time guys, thank you so much for watching, I had fun playing this, hope you had fun watching it, and I hope to see you next week for some more Subnautica. Adios. Bye-bye.